So those of you who are familiar with my channel have probably picked up on the strong ghost theme that I have. The channel is called Groovy Ghost Notes. I call myself the Groovy Ghost. I have this little mascot of sorts. Hold on, let me get him. He looks so goofy, bro. Let me fix you up, my boy. And so the channel's mascot is this little ghost named Groovy, who you can find in plush form, I guess, on my YouTube banner. And I recently made a PNG tuber of him or her, them, I'm not sure. Why do I draw Groovy with cat ears sometimes and sometimes I don't? I don't know. I don't know the lore behind that yet. But I'm a music commentary channel with a strong ghost theme. So I thought today that I would really try to do best of both worlds and talk about musician ghost stories. I'm sure that everyone has quite the ghost story to share and musicians are no different. So here are some spooky stories from different musicians. First up, we have Courtney Love, who is the lead singer of Hole and Kurt Cobain's wife from 1992 to his death in 1994. She claims she has seen the spirit of her husband. When she moved from Seattle, she was moving into this new home with her daughter and her boyfriend at the time. This is when she claims that she saw Kurt Cobain sitting in a chair. I saw Kurt in a chair for a moment and he said hi to me and then he left. Next up, we have Black Sabbath. Oh my God, I love Ozzy Osbourne so much. I look like him in a very strange way sometimes, only when I'm wearing glasses. And then you know what? I will take that celebrity lookalike with pride. While recording Sabbath Bloody Sabbath in 1973, Ozzy and Tony allegedly saw some creepy things. They were facing an incredible case of writer's block, so they thought that going back to the UK would fix this problem, and I guess it did, but it also got some little spooks and ghouls involved. They decided that Clearwell Castle in Gloucestershire, England was the place to go to cure this little creativity problem. The mansion was built in 1727 and is now a wedding venue. I would get married there, absolutely. You think I'm joking? No, I would walk down the aisle to actually Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, don't think I won't. And it'll be the best wedding that you've ever seen. And then I'll do a drum solo at the reception. Anyways, here is the actual ghost part of this. We rehearsed in the armory there. And one night I was walking down the corridor with Ozzy and we saw this figure in a black cloak. We followed this figure back into the armory and there was absolutely no one there. Whoever it was had disappeared into thin air. The people that owned the castle knew about this ghost and they said, oh yes, that's the ghost of so-and-so. And we were like, what? I love when haunts become so common that the people with said haunt are just like, oh yeah, that's, you know, Jerry, it's cool. But this creepy mansion now wedding venue actually did fix Black Sabbath's creativity problem. Peaser said, we rehearsed in the dungeons and it was really creepy, but it had some atmosphere. It conjured up some things and stuff started coming out again. I mean, there you go. Fellow creatives out there, my fellow artists, if you're experiencing any sort of art block, just go to a, a, a scary uh, haunted mansion. Next up we have Kesha. Um, I'm not really sure where to go with this one. It's certainly one of the more strange ones I have on this list. Kesha, Kesha said that she got a little, a little freaky, if you know what I mean, with a ghost. She actually says that this experience is what made her write the song Supernatural. In an interview with Ryan Seacrest, she claims that one of the houses she was living in had a weird energy and it would keep her up at night and eventually it progressed into something that ghost had some riz, if you know what I mean, rizzed her up from the other side. She said, it did scare me, but that's part of the fun. I mean, if you say so, like, whose grandpa is that? I mean, you don't know how old that ghost is. Moving on. Next up, we have Adele. In 2012, Adele bought a $6 million mansion in Sussex, England. It was supposed to be an escape from the famous musician life, but it only ended up being a nightmare because apparently it's really super haunted. Adele reportedly heard a bunch of little creepy noises and sounds that scared her so much that she hired a 24 seven bodyguard to stay there with her at all times. She also hired guards to protect the gates of this house. But like, don't worry Adele, I'm sure the ghosts are just trying to say hello from the other side. Okay. Next on this list, I have Ariana Grande, which is probably one of the most creepiest stories I have on this list. In 2013, Ariana Grande went to Kansas City and visited Stoll Cemetery, which, you know, just a little fun side note, is, is apparently one of the seven gates to hell on earth. I, 
I don't want to go there. Like, yes, I am a ghost, I am a groovy one, but I, I would like to avoid the gates of hell if I, you know, just uh, me personally. Here is her story about the experience. We went to this haunted castle and we're so excited. The next night we wanted to go to Stoll Cemetery, which is known as one of the seven gates to hell on earth. Again, why are we going there? Just leave that alone. Just leave it alone. Go to like Disneyland. I don't know. I felt this sick, overwhelming feeling of negativity over the whole car and we smelled sulfur, which is the sign of a demon. There was a fly in the car randomly, which is another sign of a demon. I was like, this is scary. Let's leave. Valid response. I rolled down the window before we left and said, we apologize. We didn't mean to disrupt your peace. I took a picture and there were three super distinct faces in the picture. They're faces of textbook demons. Imagine if they weren't demons. <laughs> Imagine if they were just like some random ghosts. And they're like, well damn, Ariana Grande thinks we're demons. They were just that ugly. <laughs> the next day I tried to send the picture to my manager and it said, this file cannot be sent. It's 666 megabytes. Spooky. But the story doesn't end there. A little later, she experienced even more paranormal activity. I just gotten off the phone and as soon as I closed my eyes, I heard this really loud rumble right by my head. When I opened my eyes, it started again with whispers. Every time I closed my eyes, I started seeing these really disturbing images with like red shapes. Then I opened my eyes and got back on the phone and I was like, I'm really scared. I don't want to go to bed tonight. At this point, this is when she reports seeing a giant, massive black figure in her room. Which, I don't know about you, but that certainly sounds like a demon. And I am the radio demon. <laughs> when she saw the figure, she started crying and got back on her phone to call for help. She was phoning a friend. When confronted with a demon, what do you do? You phone a friend. And apparently her advice was tell it to F off. Which could work, but she figured that she wasn't going to do that. She wasn't going to upset it, and she certainly wasn't going to let it scare her. She said, because all it wants is fear, it feeds on fear. And she watched it move to the front of her bed, where she then went to sleep and never saw it again. I feel like that is some pretty uh, fair advice. I've certainly seen that before. The thing that ticks off ghosts and these spirits the most is that, like, if you just don't care. <laughs> Which, imagine that on, like, the ghost side. I'd be mad! If I showed up and I was haunting some person and they're just like, whatever, I'd be like, work with me. I'm like trying to spook you and you just like don't care. So I, I, I get that. The last story that I have for you is from Alice Cooper, which if anyone was to experience ghosts, it would certainly be this dude. Alice Cooper and Joe Perry from Aerosmith were writing songs in New York when things started going a little kooky. Alice Cooper claims that while they were in this house, something was stealing their gear. Among the stolen gear was supposedly his harmonica and Joe's strings. Which I mean, I guess that little ghoul just wanted to rock out on the other side. I mean, that would be me. He also claimed to have heard movement in the basement as if someone was moving around furniture. He said, it wasn't like the movies where people say, let's get flashlights and go down there. We were out of there. Which is what you should do, I think. That is, yeah. He called his manager to tell him about the experience, to which the manager said, oh yeah, the Amityville Horror was written about that house. To which Cooper replied, and you were going to tell me about this when? I mean, yeah, if I was going to write some tunes in a haunted house, I'd probably want to know that. And then I'd probably put the ghost on the track. You know what I mean? The first album that has ghosts in it, that's going to be the song of the summer for sure. Anyways, guys. That was my list of little spooky stories that musicians have experienced firsthand. You know, to really fit in the theme of my whole channel because I'm the groovy ghost. Someone in the comments said that my ring light makes it look like I have hearts in my eyes. That's not true. I am incapable of feeling love. It's only pain and despair, actually, because I'm a ghost. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe. You can check me out on all of these platforms. And I will see you in the next one.